I'd like to call to order the uh, Algoma Common Council meeting on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. I'd like the clerk to take the roll, please. Baring. Here. Dashlet. Here. Four. Here. Kierke. Here. Lattenbach. Here. Maverden. Here. Tabak. Here. Schmidt. Here. Good. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the minutes reflect that this uh, meeting was posted in compliance with the open meeting law. Approval or changes to the order of the agenda as published. If there are none, I'll accept the motion. So move. Moved by Scott. Second. Second by Kevin. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. For everybody that's here this evening, um, the council is going to deliberate into closed session at this time. I will accept, uh, ask for a motion in a second. We will take a roll and we'll go into closed session. I cannot tell you how long it's going to take. Um, I think there's room in the library, Kathy, if people want to go in there and stay. There's room out in the hall. Um, hopefully it does not take that long. We have a couple items in closed session that we need to talk about. We will then come back into open session, and then we will follow the form of the agenda as printed. On the agenda, there is a part, if you look under new business, uh, for those of you that have an agenda, um, on, under item 15, new business, you will see item E. That is the consideration of offers to purchase the Algoma Long-Term Care Unit Medical Center. When we get to that item, then the council will take up discussion at that point. So. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know what our format is tonight, and uh, I know a lot of you are here for probably one reason, and that is the nursing home. So when we get to that point, uh, we'll get to it on the, on the agenda. But for now, I'm going to accept the motion to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Review and consideration of offers to purchase Algoma Medical Center, and C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, city administrator's recruitment process and advertised salary range. Thank you. Moved. Moved by Jake. Second. Se second by Steve. Roll call vote, please. Havoc. Yes. <coughs> Schmidt? Yes. Pierke? Yes. Four? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Mehring? Yes. Lautenbach? Yes. Mever Meverden? Yes. Okay. At this time, then, I would ask that everyone in the council chamber, with the exception of uh, the gentleman res representing SVN, would leave the room, and the clerk and the administrator would stay. Um, <clears throat> do we need the city attorney here? Do you want the city attorney here? Okay, Jake. All right. Um, first of all, before I ask for action taken as a result of closed session, for some of the, you people that might have not been here when we opened up the meeting, there is a special under new business under item uh, 15E. That is where we will discuss the consideration of offer to purchase the Algoma long-term care unit. So right now, when I asked for action as a result of closed session, that was on a different matter. So, um, okay, any action as of the result of the closed session? I will make a mo motion to move forward with the recruitment process as discussed for the administrator position for the city of Algoma. Second. Okay, motion made by Scott, second by Kevin to move forward with the advertising of the, to fill the administrator's position since Jared will be leaving at the end of March. Any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Let's move on with the agenda. Approval of meeting minutes. Anybody have any question or comments? Motion? Move. Moved by Steve. Second. Second by Leah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public comment. Uh, public comment, just to reiterate, must be limited to items not on the agenda. Comments will be limited to five minutes in length. 
Commentators must state name and address for the record. The council's role is to listen and not to discuss, debate, comments, nor take action of those comments in the meeting. Is there anybody signed up for public comment, or is there anybody that would like to make public, public comment this evening? Seeing none, then I will close public comment. We'll move on to consideration of bills, claims, and conference attendance, general bills, and credit card payments. Did everybody have a chance to review those? Yes. Any questions on any of them? So moved. Moved by Lee. Second. Second by John to approve the bills and credit card payment. Roll call vote, please. Covered in. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Dashlet. Yes. Maring. Yes. Lautenbach. Yes. Boer. Yes. Pavic. Yes. Pierkey. Yes. Conference attendance, uh, lethal instruction, Officer De Temple and Chief Remaker, firearms instructor, Chief Remaker. Discussion. Do we really need another firearm instructor in a small town like this? Sure, so uh, great question, Alderman. Typically you want to have redundancy so we can actually train. So if I train somebody else, somebody else can train, actually certify him on it. Randy, could you use the microphone, nope, I'm please? Sorry. Nope, sorry. Right. Nope, So a reference to the FRS instructor, typically you want to have redundancy. There's two people within the department to actually be able to do that. So there's a second. Sir, can you guys hear? No? No. Did you guys hear me now? Is that good? Sorry about that. So actually there's two things that are less lethal. That's for our... Uh, our uh, less lethal launcher that we're going to get, which is part of our capital outlay. So that was actually trying to get training. So when we actually feel that piece of equipment, we can actually train everyone to do it. That I understand yep. that one. That's no problem. Yep. It's the other one because Brad is your firearm instructor right now. Correct. 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 And then now you wanted to take it. That's, I guess, what I'm asking. Is it really pertinent to have two people on our department? That so, can, you know, that can do it because if, let's say, for instance, you want to do it and something happens with Brad, you couldn't use the county's firearm instructor to help out just that one time? Or? We can, but typically when have redundancy, when have at least two people trained in major categories to actually conduct that training. So one is a lead instructor, one's an assistant instructor, and additionally, it's those individuals can get instructed. So currently, if Brad wants to, get, to actually get qualified, which he has to, um, I have to reach out to the Sheriff's Department to get him qualified this so in, in turn he'll qualify us, if that makes sense. Well, I know where, so, you, where you're coming. Yep. I just, I just and the, and it's an overkill in my book. I well, think. then, and additionally, there's a liability piece to all that, right? So, heaven forbid, if we ever have an officer-involved shooting, and thank the Lord we haven't had that in the city at all, but as Chief of Police and, and the head executive of the Police Department, I'd be calling to testify to the training, the officers' training, and our training, what we do for the department itself and also the policies. Um, it adds to my credibility as being that lead executive saying, I'm instructing and I help instruct the course, and I know what the training is, and I know what the training was given as an instructor. <coughs> Where um, is this class at? Green Bay. At WTC. Okay. How many hours? Uh, it's from the 18th to the 26th. Does it, does it uh, uh, count toward your uh, yearly certification hours? Yes, it does. Is that also for rifle instructor too, or is it just handgun? It's the standard one. I think it's pistol and rifle's part of it, but rifle's not, it's not mandated to have rifle in the well, state. some yeah. courses it's yeah. just handgun and some handgun. This one is both, but th the big thing is the pistol. Any other questions, comments? The cop, go the ahead. The, the the cost of the training is listed here like at 525 that is something that's in the budget for the department correct okay the only comment that i have is that wherever possible i i think we should try to work with the county on, on some of these things whether it's training whether it's firearms training or whether it's any of that i mean we do subsidize the budget for kiwani county for the sheriff's department so I think, Randy, we need to be utilizing that. Um, we need to have a good working relationship with them, just like we try to have with all our other departments here. I know right now we're talking to 
the village president from Luxembourg and uh, the current acting, uh, ma the current mayor in Kiwani and trying to work some things together. I think that's what we, the direction we need to take as a city. Uh, so I just want to reiterate that, that we try to utilize the county as much as we can, so. And that's actually a great point, and actually we do more than that. We actually reach out to other cities, and we commonly train with Kiwani and actually Luxembourg PD, too. And we've actually helped them do courses. Okay. So, is there a motion on the floor for both of them? We'll take them both together. I'll make a motion. Steve so makes the motion. Second. Second by Casey. Any other <coughs> questions or comments? The county does offer our training to all the <coughs> cities. When I do a firearms training, I it to all the cities to sign up so the county is willing to work with all the cities in fact I qualified Galbraith and his, his whole department this last qualification and Brad's going to qualify with us tomorrow so we do offer this to the to the cities and the villages okay it's not something new okay thank you so there is a motion in the second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried committee reports um, everybody should have had a chance to look at the committee reports are there any particular questions on any of the reports? Mr. Mayor, I got a concern on one of them here. I took a picture of it. I was looking through the revenues and losses for the Medical Center for February, and I know we don't control the board, so I don't know about their finances, but it shows you had a loss of 50700 for February. Is that true? John, can you comment? I wasn't at the meeting. I, I looked at your minutes and I see there is a... That, that is true. Okay, uh, the next thing. question I have is how are you recouping that? Are you using COVID money to recoup that 50000 Are you using COVID to pay your salaries and then using the 50000 out of your general operating? How are you getting that back? Because obviously you didn't come to us for money. Correct. Yes. How, are we, how are you doing that? There are reserves that are set aside for... in. in any given month, you can have a ra rather dramatic swing in um, revenues and expenditures, expenses. And we have learned that we have to prepare for that, and we have a uh, fund that is set aside for just that. Um, it also means that we do not uh, go out and use agency nursing uh, when at all possible because that is a that essentially is a budget buster completely uh, a lot of folks have gone you know in, in the red because of that sure. just that one feature so we've learned in the past to put aside money when we have it okay. spend it when we need it so with these big decisions coming up on this agenda how much reserve do you have if we're going to have a $50,000 loss in, say, March, say, April, if we were projected at a $400,000 loss for this year? And with Masonite pulling out, I don't have, we don't have the revenue of that. So I'm just, I want to know long term here, if, if best I could, you can. If I could interject, I, I think that this level of detailed discussion would be more appropriate at that agenda item. Okay. This is strictly about the reports. I think to get into that level of detail, we should have that discussion when we get to that well, agenda item. Give me those figures. That's okay. what I want to know. Any other questions on any of the other reports? Hearing none, then I'll accept the motion to approve receipt of those committee reports. Moved. So, second. Moved by Jake, Jake, second by Kevin. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Old business, we have resolution number 1105-2022. That's the park and rec fee schedule. We went over this at the finance and personnel. Um, there was discussion. I think there was some verbiage change. Yeah. All right, Matt, uh, to coincide with some of the questions that came out. So um, right now, I guess I'm looking for a motion to approve it. So moved. Moved by Lee. Second. Second by Casey. Any discussion or questions on it? It is a fee schedule, so I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Yeah. Mary. Yes. Daflet. Yes. Lottenbach. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Meverden. Yes. Yarkey. Yes. Or? Yes. Pavick. Yes. Thank you. Under new business, resolution 1109 2022, it's my understanding we can no longer get the Durango. Uh, that's correct, Mayor. So uh, I was formed last night by the, uh, by the manufacturing, by the car dealership, that Chrysler had canceled all orders that weren't being currently under production. 
not just for us, but for the whole state. It was actually for the whole the United States. So we're not the only agency affected by it. So um, we are no longer able to get that vehicle. We would have to wait for 2023 models to come out, which would be July. At this point in time, what my suggestion would be is we told basically table everything to July and take a look at what's available at that point in time. So we're not making or changing resolution that might have to get changed again. Um, I think it's best to kind of take a tactical pause and see how the market kind of fluctuate and let it kind of settle out because it's definitely challenging and uh, unpredictable at this time. Okay. Is everybody okay? We'll just table that then. Table. And it'll be brought up at uh, probably in July sometime when they start to take orders. Okay, resolution number 1110-2022, the leaf back purchase. Uh, we also went through that at Finance and Personnel. Matt, do you have any comments on that for the people here? I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Um, how old is the one we currently have? Uh, it was bought in 97, I believe. Right. And 96. This, this would be replacing that unit, but it would be a unit that would be self-sustained on its own trailer. We would not have to put the... A uh, box in the back of the pickup anymore like we do now, which also I guess there's some issues about that having to be repaired. So overall, I think it's it's probably a good move at this point. Yeah. Is the, is the, the, uh, the old box and the old uh, uh, back uh, uh, junk? Uh, no. Well, it's in tough shape. We would be putting it out. The city will put it out for public bid. Um, and we'll reach out to some municipalities um, to try to sell it. But as far as trade and value, they don't want it. Right. Yeah. What do you think it's worth? Well, I'm going to take a it. stab. I, it's been a, a real long time, Jake, price since price. I've sold the leaf vac. <laughs> 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 I, it, I never you have. Know, is it fifteen hundred? Yeah, is it fifteen hundred bucks? I mean, we're you know. Are we I I would say today's date and scrap value, it's probably worth fifteen hundred dollars. I was hoping to bring somewhere in the five thousand dollar range, okay. but right. I don't want to promise anything. But I've never metal, sold a leaf but, vac. But metal weight, it's fifteen hundred bucks. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. In <clears throat> order. All right. <laughs> so moved. moved by Lee. Second. Second by Kevin. Again, this is a uh, monetary purchase, which is also in our capital outlay. So I just need to have all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 11 2022 sewer credit application policy. Are we ready to move on this? This has come back how many times already? Yeah, the, the uh, changes that we asked for are implemented, and I think it was approved. At finance, finance and personnel. We just had to do the final here. So, so but all the, the changes are implemented, and it's on there. So. OK. Then I'll accept the motion. Moved. Moved by Jake. Second. Second by Leah. Any other questions or comments? Not all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution number 1112-2022, Third Street Improvement Project. Matt? I, I think everybody has it in front of you, so that would be the complete project. We opened the bids uh, Friday. We had six qualified bidders um, that returned bids, which I was very happy to see, with Peter's Concrete uh, being awarded the bid in the amount of $776,677. And then if you see the engineering contingent or the engineering added to it and the contingency of the, uh, just a contingency of the project added to it is where you get that total. And this is Third Street from where to where? Clark to Navarino to include both of those intersections. Okay. And the, and the Clark Street is going to go east far enough to pick up sewer and and water and, and, and water that is, is so that yes on clark street we will be going from that intersection of clark and third we'll be going east all the way to the driveway of the is it nicolay bank this week yeah. yes nicolay bank <laughs> say that too long the alleyway okay. there's the alleyway uh, alleyway that is correct to the alleyway and it, will it go north any on or Clark? You know where everything is on north uh, or on uh, west on Clark? Just to, into the radius. Okay. So the radius returns will be done in every intersection, but for that going down Clark Street to include water and sewer to that house on Clark. Okay. Any other questions? Motion. 
Move. Moved by Jake, second, second by Steve. Any other questions or comments? This is quite a large amount of money. We'll ask for a roll call. Four. Yes. Havoc. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Dashlet. Yes. Maring. Yes. Yarkey. Yes. Meverden. Yes. Lattenbach. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Item E, consideration of offers to purchase Algoma Long-Term Care Unit Medical Center. Um, this evening, the council met in closed session. They considered um, two offers through our um, through SVN, which is the real estate company that the city has hired. Um, Jay Hintz was here on behalf of the real estate company and presented the offers to us. Um, is there any discussion before I ask for a vote? Any questions on anything? I'll be looking for a motion. Now can I get the answer to yeah. the question? Go ahead. The question is, do we have do we have the funds? How much reserve funds do you have at the moment to be able to keep it going if we have this loss that's continuing at fifty thousand in February? And then also to that, I know we have COVID money, which is money given for COVID, which will eventually not be here, correct? Correct. All of those, all of those fundings that we have received have been placed in a public funds money market investment account. At the end of 2021, uh, that fund contained one million eighty-eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars and ninety-one cents. We have brought, we have used those funds for um, funding operations uh, for the past two months, and it is down around nine hundred thousand. And that's your reserve to do payroll and all that to keep the that's place. That's correct. Up. It's also what's there to, um, you know, it, it's where we accumulate the dollars that we pay back the city with as well. Okay. And the COVID money is something that we got that what are we using that COVID money <coughs> for right now? Some of that COVID money is earmarked or it, you can only spend it for certain activities. Okay. Okay, hold on just a second. I didn't realize I was going to get all of these questions. Well, without the city really controlling this other than borrowing money, the only time we can really answer stuff is when we're talking about it now. So that's one thing I need to know before we make decisions. Gene, will you want to help me out here since you're in the audience? The COVID. The COVID dollars are used um, for a number of different things. Number one, we are testing our employees twice per week. Okay. Testing is very expensive. Anytime a public member comes in to visit and they are coughing, showing a temperature, or any symptoms, we are testing the public as well. In addition, anytime a resident goes out to an outside appointment and we see that there are symptoms there, we are testing them. We are also using those dollars, and these are permissible dollars to be used to pay for staff to take the pulse and the oxygen saturation levels of every resident, every shift, every day. Besides that, our glove costs are more than four times what they were prior to 2020. The market taking advantage of the COVID is one of those. Um, in addition, we have equipment needs for personal protective equipment. We also use COVID funds for air purification systems, HEPA filtration in every single resident room, every room in the entire lobbies or anywhere where residents go. And how much dollars do you have in your COVID account? Right Just now, roughly. Um, there's, I can't tell you for sure, John has the paperwork on it and he can't find it and it's brightly colored purple so he should be able to. Yeah, okay. um, well, never mind. It's the money that we received in November and December of 2021. Okay. We set some of that money aside to cover the pay increase for the employees which was roughly $2 per hour for the majority of the staff. That is allowed under COVID funds for employee retention. All right, thank you. 
Any other questions? Well, go ahead. Sorry, John. Sorry. Scott? Uh, I, <clears throat> I, I don't have any questions, but I do want to take this opportunity to uh, kind of reiterate some of the conversation that was had a couple of weeks ago when we had a special um, finance and personnel meeting um, to, to allow discussion back and forth between the medical center and the council. Um, as this is uh, a, a very, um, obviously there, there's a lot of passion around this decision. This is a very important decision and it's gonna affect a lot of people. Um, as I alluded to during my comments at that time, I, I, I wanna say it again. Um, I, I can not only speak for myself, but the, the other individuals that are sitting up here with me today that this has never been about the, the quality of care um, the nursing's home abil ability to to provide the quality of care that they do. We have an outstanding nursing home. We have the best staff that is up there. They genuinely care. Um, that is not what this is about. Um, there were nine individuals that, that came in during that meeting that, that took the opportunity to speak publicly. Um, I took notes on all of them. Um, there was uh, discussions that revolved around other um, other items that were on the table for referendums. There was discussions on um, okay. some very touching um, losses that these individuals had, whether it was family that they had there or that they worked there. Um, this is, it, it was very, very apparent that the individuals that came in that day um, had a lot of passion around this decision. And, and, and I totally get that and as I said, um, I don't think anybody up here um, is looking forward to making this decision because one way or the other, regardless of whether or not we sell it to an outside entity, sell it to a, an inside um, current administration and management or, or remain a status quo, um, it, 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 I would say it's the proverbial uh, rock and hard place. Um, there is, there, there, regardless of what decision that we make tonight um if we do decide to move forward um and and sell it to an outside entity there's there there could be possible repercussions and and as the individuals that were up here um a couple of weeks ago stated there was a lot of uncertainties of well what's going to happen there was um a lot of there were comments that were made regarding big box stores and corporations coming in and profit is a horrible thing and it's all about the corporations and the, the assumption was that no matter who it was, if it's an outsider that's coming into this facility and, and that we would be interested in selling it to, the automatic assumption was that it was the, the results were going to be grave and that people were going to lose their jobs. There would be um, a decrease in wages, decrease in the ability for them to perform their job duties. And, and as I said during that uh, discussion and my comments, all of us up here, including myself, we want to do what is best for the city of Algoma, its residents, the facility itself, and the people that work there at the facility. Um, this is not an easy decision. Um, it's nothing that uh, I don't think anybody up here has taken lightly. And, and like I said, if, if we were to uh, decide to move forward or decide to um, give an opportunity and extend and, and sell to the current uh, management, um, something needs to be done. Um, th this taking the motion out of it 100% completely, there is a viable option. I think that the, the facility itself um, can be profitable if it's managed and run correctly. Um, but leaving it as status quo under the city of Algoma, that is not fair to the city's taxpayers. Um, it's, not, it, it's not fair. The, the losses and the amount of money that the citizens have had to put into the facility is well over a million dollars. I think we're sitting, as of the last meeting we had, $480,000. There's 502000 I believe, that's for retirement and another couple hundred thousand. It's, it's 1.1 and change million. Um, I, I, cannot, I, I, I cannot sit here and um, I understand that this is a difficult decision that needs to be made, but it, as, as an elected official and, and as a, a fellow taxpayer, um, there are a lot of other pr projects that can be, everybody, we hear it on a daily basis, all of us up here. 
with the infrastructure and the roads and, and why can't we afford to do these things. Um, leaving it as status quo is, is not an option. I, I was voted, I, I, I decided to join here. I've been a lifelong, I was born and raised. I was born in that, before it was the long-term uh, care unit, I was born in it, it was a hospital. I got involved on this council because I wanted to make a difference and if it means standing up here and being ridiculed and thrown under the bus and, and, and making the tough decisions, um, that is something that, you know what, I, I signed up for. It's not something that I take lightly. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be a popular decision. But I truly believe that at the end of the day, whether it's this meeting or any previous meeting, the decisions that I make and that I know that the council members here make for themselves, we make them because we truly believe that it is the best thing for the city and its, and its citizens. There, there was discussion that was, there, I shouldn't say there was discussion, but I, I know that there's been several um, pieces of paper that have been floating around town. There's been several flyers that have been floating around town and within the facility, facility itself um, that are encouraging people to show up and vote, that are encouraging people to come to these meetings. And, and by all means, I'm, I'm happy to see, you know, as many people as there are in the audience tonight. That's awesome. Get involved. Be involved. There's productive um, conversations, and then there's uh, what I would call, um, unfortunately, uh, propaganda and, and misinformation that has been uh, established and put out there. So to the, the people at home, the people in the audience, the people at home that are watching this, that have the opportunity, before you start throwing stones and, and, and um, making a, and throwing out your um, opinions, I, I suggest strongly, do your homework, get all of the information. There are always three sides to every story. And before making judgment, um, collect all of your information. As far as there being uh, rhetoric up there, wanting people to come in and vote, and encouraging them to come in and vote, and vote us off of here because we're even thinking about this, um, yeah, I would agree. We need you to vote. I, I encourage every single person to, to, to vote. Do your homework and then vote. Um, I think that since I've been on here since 2018, the city of Algoma, uh, we've done some pretty amazing things. Um, we are growing, we are going in the right direction. It doesn't mean all of the decisions are always going to be positive and, and popular with the census. However, it is being done uh, for the right reasons and we are being fiscally responsible. Doing nothing in this instance is not fiscally responsible and it's not, I, I, I can't. So with that being said, I, I will leave it. Yes, I agree with everything that's been said and the, the comments that are out there. I encourage everybody to go out there and vote. And if you wanna seek um, fiscally responsive, uh, responsible decisions that are being made, um, or do you, do you want to have, uh, um, the other choice is, is throwing taxpayer dollars irresponsibly um, to solve problems. Throwing money at something is, is not gonna solve the problem. And it's at the expense of the city of Algoma's taxpayers. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Um, this is not something that I take lightly. Um, and it is something that I know that there's a lot of passion around. Um, not only at, at this table up here, but out in the audience and at home. So thank you. Any other comments? John? A lot of this started as a, well, let, me, let me back up. In August of 2021, um, an initial budget was developed which projected a a loss of close to half a million dollars. That was, a, that was startling, but it wasn't new. In the past, we have had those kind of six-figure plus uh, losses projected to realize a profit on operations and payment from all sources. If, we, if the 
medical center is losing the kind of money that some of the folks here are asserting based on their interpretation of the um, audited city finances um, let's look at that because we have been paying off advances we the medical center uh, starting in 2018 uh, was kind of a break-even year the balance due at that point was six hundred twenty eight thousand dollars 2019 repayments of thirty thousand dollars 2020 forty five thousand six hundred fifty three dollars twenty twenty one sixty thousand and so far in twenty twenty two ten thousand in fiscal year twenty twenty one the budget projection was a loss of four hundred and four thousand six hundred seventy one dollars actual realize and I grant you there is COVID dollars involved with this was 743,201 in 2020 a projected budget deficit of 391,238 actual experience was two was profit of 242,167 that is not a taxpayer um, burden in that time there were also um, capital projects that were paid for by the medical center there was a portion of the uh, paving paving of the parking lot that took place which we joined in the loan to the tune of two hundred three thousand seven fifty two and which we have funds set aside to pay off most of that the numbers that are being used by folks who are looking at this facility we have provided the numbers that I have given you not the city's audited finance that everyone seems to be hanging their head on I've been very close to this as I have been a, a member of the medical board since 2014 and have been their um, secretary since then. I was going to sign off and get off of secretary role uh, in, two, in this year. It looks like that may happen one way or the other. I just wanted to say that I'm just not sure the premise that we are using in order to make this decision. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? Isn't the premise the four hundred thousand dollar budget shortfall for twenty twenty two that was presented to us before we started this process of what we we're gonna do? That is what I believe precipitated this process. And we have not seen an updated budget, not counting on COVID relief money, because that money's not guaranteed. Also we're losing the Masonite money which their lease is done I believe April 1st I think so we're losing their income we have 25 patients I was told last time we had a meeting 24 25 so that's my question is how are we going to get we're going to be taking our reserves to support us for this year and next year and then we have no money to operate we'll have to borrow money to operate to pay our payroll like we did in 2015 because I was on this council when we were going month by month and they're like hey we got to make payroll okay we'll write you out a check and we did no questions asked and we thought about selling this two three years ago and I said no let's give them a chance they projected that they could make this go and the, the, they did a great job you guys are doing the best you can but we got to look at the facts my concern is the employees yes without the employees we'll have nothing there and I don't want them to leave. I want what's best for them. So I think we need to look at the whole picture and do what's best for them. The city running it is not best right now, not with the figures that we're getting. I don't disagree with you that the model of municipal ownership for that facility is not a good one in the long term. I don't believe it's sustainable. That is a discussion that we started this year. Right. And 
what we have been looking at and discussing at the board meetings is so what's next what's going to happen is someone coming up with a some kind of innovative creative idea of you know spinning off a a non-municipal entity in order to manage that facility is there going to be a sale what does that sale look like Or, or going with a management facility management agreement. The downside there is that the uh, municipality retains ownership of the facility and is on the hook for it. And if you get administrator in there who doesn't understand the business, that doesn't understand you know modern systems and how they work with the government, you will see a failure there. We saw that with the two previous medical administrators. That's what put us to this point. And you guys are doing the best we can. But my question is, how can we keep running like this? We're going to have to make some decisions, Tony. I agree, and I agree that we probably should not keep it under municipal ownership. And I, I don't think that there's a lot of disagreement with that. Correct. Thank you. Anybody else? No, I, I, I have a few comments. Um, again, I would echo Scott in his, uh, can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, give it to Grandpa, right? Okay. Anyway, I, I would echo Scott from the standpoint that uh, 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 none of us uh, 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 in this room want to see anything happen to the residents, to the employees, or the facility if it were closed. That would be the worst thing that could happen for the city of Algoma. On the other hand, I would like to respond from a financial standpoint to John's comments. And I understand where John is coming from, but John is using funds that under general accounting principles can't be used. A gift, a grant, a uh, bequest of funds can't be included in your general operating capital because they, once they are gone, they are gone. You can't live from grant to grant to grant and make a viable argument that you're profitable because you're pretty good at writing grants. What happens when the grants dry up? So our auditors, the single largest CPA firm in the state of Wisconsin with offices all over the state, CLA, have to use federal and state regulated methods of accounting for business operation profit. The fact that you get a grant is not counted. It can't be counted any more than an inheritance from someone you love is counted as income because it's not. It's a gift. And when it's gone, it's gone. So COVID money, gone. We're moving on to a different thing now in the, in, the, in, the, in the news cycle. I don't think there's going to be another COVID grant uh, issued by anybody in this country, state, federal, or even municipal, uh, outside maybe uh, Los Angeles or New York maybe, where they, or San Francisco, where they seem to be able to give, have money grow on trees. You can't use bequests. You can't use funds from non-business sources. And those business sources from a regulated, that's why they're called certified public accountants. They got to follow the rules, have determined that in 2020, including the Masonite rent, 
the loss was $537,651. Now, that was made up, granted, by grants and other sources of income that were one time or very limited scope and definition. The previous year, the loss was $329,000. The year before that was $160,000. I can go back to 2012. There was an actual net business operating profit of $71,000. That was 10 years ago. We've given, we've tried and tried and tried to figure out a way to sustain this nursing home facility since I've been on the council. And it, it, folks, it's just not sustainable. The finances, from my perspective, as a retired business executive, I look at these numbers, you can't do it. Imagine your own household losing $30,000 a year where you don't have the income to make that $30,000, whether you run up a credit card, whether you borrow from your, from your parents or nephews or neighbors or whatever, you can't live with negative cash flow. It just isn't possible. You've got to pay that credit card bill, and that bill is due. So whatever we do, personally, I want to see that facility grow, prosper, hire new people, expand, develop new opportunities for nursing facilities, uh, develop opportunities for memory care, develop opportunities for possibly assisted living or even independent living. That is a very large campus and those possibilities are there. But you've got to have deep enough pockets to do it. And quite frankly, the city and the, and, and, and the current and the current budgeting the way, structure the, that's going on in the, it, it, with our nursing home, the pockets aren't the pockets aren't anywhere near deep enough. So we, we we've got some options. Uh, uh, Scott pointed out that that, that that there that there are three options. Yes, you're absolutely right. There are three options. We can sell it. We can not sell it and do nothing, or we can immediately close it. Option two, not sell it, is a slow death to simply closing the facility as we speak. That would be bad for the city. And as far as the money that's owed by the nursing home to the city of Algoma, it has cost the city of Algoma two points in our credit schedule and our ability to borrow funds. So the interest that we're paying, we actually have to add 2% interest to the funds that we borrow. You just heard us authorize a $760,000 capital expenditure which is borrowed money. We're going to be borrowing about a million dollars a year. Is that, is that about right, Amber? Yes. Amber's shaking her head in there about right. So that's going to take 86% 80, of, that, of that budget to pave Clark to Navarino on 3rd Street and do all of the infrastructure, renew all of the plumbing, renew all of the water, renew everything that's underground that needs to be fixed so that we have a new clean street just like we did 6th Street last year. And the year after that we're going to do another chunk of road. And the year after that we've got another one planned. We have done some absolutely fabulous things. We've got a grant. Actually it's not even a grant. The Corps of Engineers uh, 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 awarded Algoma 19.2 million bucks and they're going to come in on their nickel and rebuild the marina for us. 
at least the breakwaters, and, and we're hoping that they're receptive to expanding the, the marina and doing a, 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 and allowing the city to increase revenues that will help us control the constant drumbeat of raising taxes. But until we can reduce, our, our, it's the, here's the difference. Current home loan rate is, hey, call it 3.5%. But because our credit rating has been damaged by what the business operations side of the nursing home, we're going to pay on that home loan, we're going to pay 5.5%. Just like you would if your credit score was 600 as opposed to 800. That's the reality of the financial market and the financial considerations that we have to make. So God bless everybody that's working there. God bless everybody that's supporting it. God bless everybody that has an emotional attachment to that building. I think that is fabulous. I love this. I wish our chamber looked like this every, every, every finance and personnel meeting we had every city, city council meeting and I wish that everybody would stand up there and speak to something that they think the city can improve on. We are receptive to that. I also wish everybody get out and vote. Vote your conscience but as Mr. Meverden says, learn the facts, learn the numbers. It's wonderful to vote from your heart but the world sometimes doesn't run from here. It runs from here and it runs into dollars and cents and percentages and how you're going to budget your funds. So, God bless you. Come on back next week. We'd love to see you. We'd love to have you. When's the finance and personnel? Uh, 15th? Yeah. Come back on the 15th. Tell us, what, tell, us where, tell us where the potholes are. Tell us what we need to fix. Go visit the fire department. See what they're having to deal with. Talk to Randy about and have him take you down into the in, into the dungeon. If you're if you're physically capable, but uh, uh, we 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 can't we can't help you down there if if, uh, if if you've got a disability because it's not ADA compliant. We have to work on these things, folks. And again, it takes money, and the better and lower. The better our credit rating, the lower the interest is, the less it costs all of us to do the things that everybody wants us to do. So that's it. Thank you, Scott. Please vote. Come back. Tell us your needs. Talk to us. Sometimes we, 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 it's like talking, uh, talking in a vacuum. We'd love to hear from you. Email us if you can. But honestly, look at the numbers. Think about how you manage your family finances and just extrapolate that into the same way the city has to do business as well. We don't have an endless supply of funds. We're not the federal government. We can't control how many dollars they print. Anyway, that's it. Okay. I'm done. All right. Anybody else have any other? Casey. Yeah, <clears throat> I won't belabor it. Um, Scott and Jake and John all covered pretty well. Um, I'm also a lifelong resident, also born there, um, just like Scott. But I think looking at this body, you see people that, that weren't from here. We see pers perspectives from John and Jake and, and Leah. Um, and so I, I don't know if it makes a lot of difference on whether or not it's internal or external. The important thing is quality of care, <clears throat> and that's always been at the forefront of this. And you know, it's it's reiteration, but the the reason why we're pursuing it is to to maintain this facility to care for the people in this community. Uh, this place is is the residents' homes. You all know that. Everybody who works there knows and treats it like that. And uh, I think it's important to keep that in mind. So. Whatever decision comes down the pike, I think should be viewed through the perspective of, of the residents and what's, what's essential to them, what's important to them. And I understand there are particulars that individuals have to make as far as decisions, but knowing that uh, whatever entity takes this over, if we choose to sell it, 
um, there's always a possibility that it fails. You know, a, a, a huge corporate box store could fail just as much as a, a small mom and pop uh, through a, a variety of, of, of reasons um, that we can't control. So all we can do is use the information we have to try to make the best decision. And again, the interest of the residents is central there. So whatever does transpire, I hope that everybody steps back for a moment uh, from the emotion and checks the facts, but also evaluates what is the main driver for why we do what we do. Why are we sitting up here? Uh, why are you working where you work? Um, and ultimately, I mean, if you're going to be, I mean, if, if something transpires and you're angry about it, um, it's only going to negatively affect the residents, right? Our decision uh, isn't going to affect us negatively. I mean, there's ramifications possibly and, and whatnot, but um, really the, the, the core of this, the, the, the central focus of this should be residents. What's that? I, I worried about the ramifications. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, obviously, there's consequences uh, of this board. We have we have to speak to you. We have to speak to the, the public, right? Uh, there are elections that are held, so you do have that op opportunity, and uh, I, I welcome you engaging all of us uh, in that regards. Um, but it's really irrelevant. My own personal position. I mean, like my my condition in, on this board is irrelevant as far as what's important here, and that being being the resident care and being able to maintain this thing. So if I do make it another 40 years here. Perhaps I can also, you know, I can f finish my day in the same place I started it. Uh, so that's always been the forefront. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys coming out to, to echo everybody. I, I appreciate the dialogue. Um, it's been interesting. Um, and I, I look forward to more of it. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? So at this point, um, as far as the closed session, any action as of the closed session? I make a motion to entertain uh, sale of the facility to first buyer. I second. Motion made by Casey, second by Scott to um, sell the current facility to buyer number one. Um, can you clarify buyer number one, please? Sam Pullman, uh, Sam Pullman of Cadenza Healthcare. Okay. Sam Fullman of Cadenza Healthcare. We have that in the minutes. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Schmidt. Yes. Maring. Yes. Lautenbach. Yes. Meverden. Yes. Havoc. No. Boer. Yes. Kierke. Yes. Dashlet. Abstain. Six, one, abstaining. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on to item F. Algoma Police Department Officer Vacancy and Recruitment Eligibility List. Ready? I, I, I think it can go. Is that better? Okay, yep. there we go. There you go. So just give everybody an update on what's going on. Um, as you probably know, um, Officer Seidel is retiring, so we have a retirement pending come May 1st. So with that being said, and with uh, our part-timers moving on to full-time jobs, we decided to have another round of hiring process to develop that eligibility list for people we can pick from for the city. Um, so currently we put that out. Uh, we had a total nine applications come back, um, about half and half between male and female, and about half and half already have their certification, and the other half are actually in the academy right now due to graduate the 20th of May. Um, so at this time, we are planning to actually do a another process with Kiwani, the police department between our two sister cities to actually do the process to kind of split the cost on the 12th of March, which is a Saturday. Um, it's kind of short notice, but the reason we're doing that is so I can come back to you all on personal finance on the 15th with the list saying, here's our racked and stacked from the best to the, to the, 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 the other people behind that person. So when it comes time for those openings, we can make some decisions and bring it forward to you all for a full-time officer to replace the one retirement and, of course, two part-time personnel. 
Um, as before, the, the part-timers are not exclusively to Algoma. We will share them between the two other, other entities, that being the village of Luxembourg and the city of Kiwani. So that's where we're kind of at with that subject right now. So it's it's good progress. Are they going to bring uh, anything to the to the party too, Randy, or are you spearheading this whole thing? No, actually, the process um, it's going to be half and half of Kiwani. I already talked to their chief and Kiwani. He's going to be here along with the assistant chief. So um, we're trying to do it, knock it out in one day to make it convenient. No, are they bringing any recruits in too, or is it? Or, uh, uh, oh, it was it was a mutual process. Like last time when we did this, okay. they did all the advertisement. All right. Um, it was our turn to kind of host it, so we did all the advertisement okay. for this. All right. So we we kind of okay. take turns doing it. Right. So, so you share got the nine. Line. Correct. Uh, nine applicants among in line. three potentially three cities. Correct. So okay. out of that nine, two requested part time. Everybody else wants full time. Okay. And the is it? Are any of the other cities looking for an officer or just us? At this point in time, um, we're looking for part-time for the other cities because we kind of pulled those part-time personnel and with our people moving on, they kind of lost that personnel too. Um, so yeah, they're definitely looking for part-time personnel. Full-time, I don't believe so. Okay. When you look at the other city in the village, the city of Kiwani uses very little part-time. They do have six officers. Well, one is hurt, but Luxembourg does not really use part-time other than one part-time guy. So Algoma does use the most of the part-time people because we have more shifts available. So they usually work for, for Randy because nobody else really does. So is the is the listing done now or are we still is it still active? I <coughs> know uh, the deadline was actually was on Monday. Monday. Um, but if I get a resume shot to me tonight, I'll still take it. Okay. Okay. So that was information for everyone. Uh, it'll be you'll see more in upcoming month as far as uh, list and eligibility people that will qualify. Item G, promotion consideration of Officer Ann Benke from part-time to full-time employment status. Um, you want to comment on why she's being promoted? No, absolutely. Actually, it's not a promotion. It's just it's changing her status. She was one of our two part-time officers. Um, the other individual has a full-time job with the Manitowoc Police Department, and we wish him well. Um, Ann is still here, and she has been working at the same time that Zach started. Um, Clayton left for another job. His last day was Friday, and Ann's been working that shift. So she's already been trained. She's already been working here actually pretty much almost full time since uh, our sergeant was gone in military training for most of the year last year. Um, so she's knowledgeable. She's trained. She's equipped, and she's already working in the streets as it is. So my recommendation would be she's a perfect fit we're just changing her status from, from part-time to full-time to fill the vacancy of Clayton Parle who left for Door County do you need a motion yes I move that we move officer Ann Banky from part-time to full-time employment status second motion made by John second by Kevin to promote promotion <coughs> officer Ann Banky from part-time to full-time any questions or comments all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed Motion carried. Why don't you have um, her come to the next meeting just to introduce herself so that people get to know her. I know a lot of people know her, but I think it's good for the people at home to see sure. who our officers are. So. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Administrator's report. Jared, you're up. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I sent this out uh, late yesterday evening, so if you didn't get it, just bear with me. Um, so first thing on here, redevelopment area number two, that's our redevelopment project up by Denny's. Um, all the appraisals, all the initial appraisals have been completed and received and the relocation specialist um, has put together his relocation plan. That will be um, considered by the redevelopment authority next week on, the, on uh, Tuesday the 8th. Once that's adopted, he'll begin, and, and this is where this uh, little correction here to my own notes um, on the report. Um, once that relocation plan is adopted, then the initial offers are, are made. So you'll be seeing those next week, um, assuming the relocation plan is adopted and approved. Um, so property owners, once they um, have those appraisals and that initial offer, they have 60 days uh, to, if they so choose, have their own appraisal done. And again, that was a, I apologize, there was a typo there. Uh, so 60 days, not 90, that they must decide to if they want to accept the offer or have another appraisal uh, performed uh, that we would pay for. Um, and then speaking with uh, Amber, our treasurer, today you know, we were going over some new information. 
um, that we got with that relocation plan, the rough draft of it. Um, the relocation costs that we're anticipating are over our original estimates because of the market conditions right now. Um, but we don't have an exact dollar amount because this can all change because it all depends on how negotiations go with the property owners. So some of them might take less than, you know, than, uh, than they could or, or whatever the case might be or, or they take more or whatever. With that outstanding issue, we can't really put a number to it. But um, just the relocation costs in general, finding new housing is obviously, I think, to no one's surprise, uh, a little bit more than we originally estimated. Uh, the public safety building, uh, last week on Wednesday the 23rd, we had our first of two public information meetings regarding the public safety building referendum. I thought we had a very good turnout. Uh, personally, we had about, uh, we estimated about 60 people showed up. Uh, we had about a 20, 30 minutes of presentation uh, by the staff and, and a video from Bayland. Um, and then we, I'd say we had about an hour after that of, of uh, questions and answers. So and I, I thought there were a lot of really good questions, a lot of really good comments. Um, I thought it was a very constructive uh, public information meeting. And so with that, I would note that the next one is going to be held on Wednesday, March 16th in the same location, which is the elementary school auditorium at 6 p.m. So I'd strongly encourage uh, concerned persons to go to that as well. Um, and then um, in the meantime, um, I would also just want to reiterate uh, any interested uh, parties or persons who want to see our current facilities uh, to, you know, reach out to our fire chief um, or our police chief or both uh, and ask to set up a tour. Uh, they're happy to bring people through and show them our current facilities and the challenges with those um, to help illustrate uh, far better than any slideshow or, or talking points um, that I could put together, certainly. Um, actually going there and walking it is, is the best uh, demonstration we can provide. So, and they're open to doing that and generally very flexible schedule. So really encourage people to reach out to them. Uh, spring election, uh, Tuesday, April 5th. Uh, residents who are not already registered to vote, we encourage you to do so either by stopping Hall and City Hall, City Hall or uh, the easiest way to do it is to do it online at myvote.wi.gov. Uh, in person, slash uh, in-person absentee slash early voting will begin on uh, March 22nd and will end on Friday, April 1st at 5 p.m. Uh, absentee ballots can again be requested via myvote.wi.gov or filled out in the City Hall office uh, if you do in-person absentee. Um, and then, as I kind of alluded to above, in addition to all the elected offices on the ballot, will also be the referendum question asking uh, basically allowing the, the city to exceed the levy limit in order to uh, fund the, the public safety building. And finally, uh, this will be, as, as there's been some allusions to tonight, this will be my last council meeting and therefore my last administrator's report. My last day with the city uh, will be Thursday, March 31st. Uh, per the closed session discussion we had earlier this evening, uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we'll, have, we'll start posting the position. And so anyone who is qualified and interested in the position, we strongly encourage you to apply for that position. And finally, I just, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank the mayor, the council, the staff, all of our volunteers with the fire, the EMS, our board and commission volunteers, um, and all the residents uh, of Algoma for what's really been a truly uh, great two years for me. Um, although that we, you know, there were a number of challenges, not least of which was I had the, uh, the dubious pleasure of, uh, after six weeks on the job, having COVID hit. So I had about six weeks to know what it was like to be an administrator in quote normal times. Um, and then having COVID right out of the gate. Um, despite all of that, I thought we, we accomplished a lot of positive things and we got the city moving, uh, continuing to move in, in a lot of respects and then moving in the right direction in a lot of other respects. Um, and truly I wish nothing but the best for, for you guys, for everyone. The, the council, the staff, the volunteers, the residents moving forward. It really has been a great two years. Um, and yeah, a lot, of, a lot of mixed feelings on it, but I wish you guys the best. Jared, I would like to, on behalf of the council and myself, and I'm sure everybody here and everybody at home, I'd like to publicly thank you for the two years. Um, we, I've enjoyed working with you. I think you've brought a lot of good things to the city, and I think you were very helpful in us moving, continue to move forward. and in the right direction. So I want to thank you very much. Thank you.
said for the administrator's report, mayor's appointments and comments. Believe it or not, I have no comments this evening. So uh, agenda items for next meeting, of course, reach out to Erin and she'll take care of setting that up for you. Next meeting date, Monday, April 4th at 6 p.m. at City Hall. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Moved. Moved by Leah, second by Steve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you.